It's summer and it's hot. 98 degrees and rising, baby. Right now, temperatures are at 98 degrees and rising. <laughs> We're looking at five dishes that are perfect for these hot summer months from five different countries. No ovens allowed. Speaking of summer foods, I'd like to thank Love and Pies for sponsoring today's episode. The game is about love and pies, a quintessential summer food, and something that I love eating, but I'm terrible at baking. This is not uh, going the way it did in the video. You play the game as Amelia, whose mother has disappeared, and you've gone back to take care of her bakery, which has also mysteriously burned down. <laughs> would do something like that to a bakery. Your goal is to reinvigorate the cafe by redecorating it and bringing everything back up to snuff. The decorations are super cute that you get to choose from. I feel like my cafe is looking very cozy, which is just fun. <laughs> You're working with your entire family and this guy named Joe, who, I don't know, I'm getting like a little tension there, but I've also been reading a lot of romanticy lately, so I might be reading into it. The puzzles are really fun, the colors are great, and all the illustrations are super cute. It's a game that can be hard to put down once you start playing. The game is for both iOS and Android, and it is free to play. If you're like me, a game aficionado, I definitely recommend this one. If you use my link in the description, you will get 200 energy and 50 gems, which once you start playing, you will understand that those are very helpful. It's time to get back into the kitchen. Hi, my name is E. I'm a born and raised Taiwanese. A dish I would love to share with you is Jai Liang Mian, also known as Jai style cow noodle in English. Jai is a charming city in Taiwan with a fascinating history and rich culture. Jai style cow noodles are simply a cow noodle salad, typically including shredded fresh vegetables mixed with sesame dressing and mayo. I don't like. Is this even a julienne? I don't. What is a julienne? I also feel like I've said julienne so many times now that it just seems like a julienne. What does a julienne carrot look like? <laughs> There's no way. There's no way a knife did that. I feel like this is a matchstick now that I'm thinking about it. Next time you see me, I'm gonna know how to julienne. Give me like three episodes. <laughs> it's an easy to prepare dish, perfect for the summer at home. Cold noodles are common dish in Taiwan, but when it comes to dry style cold noodles, which incorporate mayo, they are a bit less common. It's more like a unique city recipe, offering an interesting twist to the traditional cold noodles. And because I like mayo, I prefer dry style cold noodles more. I'm gonna julienne the spam. <laughs> <laughs> julienne the spam. Julie and the Spam. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> These noodles are chewy, and due to the addition of alkali in the making process, they acquire a unique flavor. So for this recipe, Yi uses a cold noodle pasta sauce and a mayo. I, I could not find either of them, so we're gonna make both of them. We're gonna make the Taiwanese style mayo, and we're gonna make this kind of like peanutty pasta sauce. In addition to Jai style cold noodles, it's quite common in Taiwan to enjoy mayo with boiled meats or seafood, as well as tender bamboo shoots. To be honest, I only learned about Jai style cold noodles a few years ago. I was surprised to learn that my friend add mayo to their cold noodles. Oh, that's so good. That was so easy. Okay. Long story short, we decided to exchange recipe, and now I'm a firm convert to dry style cold noodles. Loro's mayo is without a doubt the most popular mayo brand in Taiwan. Seven hours later. <laughs> Look at what I found. An immersion blender. Okay, I'm gonna immersion blend this. It's not gonna take seven hours. I just need a bowl. I need a big bowl. Plastic? You can find it in almost every market and grocery store, making it very easy accessible. But I believe the combination of sweet and sour flavors, along with its widespread availability. Oh my god, it's already happening! Tools, technology, we're here for it. It's what makes Loro's mayo stand out in Taiwan. For me, mayo is like a sweet little guilty pressure. So in the video, hers is like looser than I, it. Maybe hers was a little thicker, but I'm gonna call it. 
could taste like frosting, like the sweetness and the lemon juice. That is very different. I'm very glad I made this one. Whoa. I think a bit of saltiness, a touch of greasy indulgence, a hint of sweetness, and a dash of acidity. It has so many diverse elements of taste, and I appreciate this kind of unique characteristic. I love this dish because it brings back a sense of nostalgia. Mayo, noodles, and sesame sauce were all common staple during my childhood. It may not have a very rich or complex flavor, but it's like comfort food from my youth with a familiar, guaranteed taste. Two big things happened while making this. Number one, I realized that I had an immersion blender this whole time. An immersion blender! I don't really know how to use this. I think I've used it to make soup once. And number two, I realized that there is such a thing as sweet mayonnaise. <laughs> Asha. No. Oh my God. This is maybe the perfect food. Oh, the sweet mayonnaise in this with like the peanut and the spam and the veggies and the noodles is like the ultimate balancer. This peanut sauce is also so delicious. I highly recommend everyone make it. While mixing tahini is a struggle, I just feel like my counters are a little too tall for me. It's still tough. Like I want it to be smooth. I spilled. <laughs> oh no! Oh no, I'm spilling everywhere. Oh God. I ultimately think that struggle was worth it to get to this end product. And while I wasn't able to find the Taiwanese mayonnaise here, I think making it like, this was very different. And I don't think just using like Hellman's would necessarily give you the same outcome. I think it would still be delicious. But like, if you've never tried sweet Taiwanese mayonnaise, I would recommend it. I feel like it's totally different. Hi Beryl, my name is Jean. I've lived in Minnesota since 1991, so a long time, but I'm originally from Delaware and I have family roots in Appalachia. The dish I wanna to share today is watermelon gazpacho. It isn't cooked, so you cut up a lot of things like watermelon, jalapeno, cantaloupe, sweet pepper, onion, cucumber, and you can add other things to it if you want. I add parsley because cilantro tastes like soap to me. You can make it as hot as you want by adding more jalapeno or other hot peppers if you'd like. If you take it out, I think it takes away the contrast to the sweet, but use a little bit of jalapeno. It doesn't get too hot if you don't want it to. I grew up eating watermelon with salt on it, so I love savory watermelon flavors, and I really love this dish during a hot season no cooking, and it tastes so fresh on hot days. It tastes like summer. Salted watermelon is like a natural sports drink. I'm not sure where watermelon gazpacho is from originally, but because of my Southern roots, I think about watermelon as savory. I make it all the time when the veggies are in season, but my favorite memory is from when I made it for a good friend who's a trained chef. He said it was perfect for a hot and steamy day. I agree with him. Serve it to your friends this summer. Most people have never tried it and everyone I've ever given it to has loved it. I have had tomato gazpacho, but I've never even thought about using watermelon. So this better be worth all the chopping. Chop, 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 chop. God, how am I still chopping? Oh yeah. Mmm. It's like spicy and sweet and sour and garlicky. I'll be honest, I was like, oh, there's cantaloupe. Yay, my favorite fruit. Yeah. I can't really taste it in this, and maybe that's because in general I think cantaloupe doesn't have much flavor. What you can taste is the pear juice. Never in my life have I bought pear juice. I don't even think about juicing pears. Like, I think about pears only as a whole. I really like this. I put ice cubes in my gazpacho because it keeps it cold. It was something my mom always did when we were growing up because actually I ate a lot of gazpacho as a kid. I get why, like you can make a lot of it really easily. And in the summertime, like you don't have to have the heat on, which is great. Although you have to chop a lot. It's been ages since I've chopped like this. In chopping all of the vegetables, I have a very serious like chef question. 
How are you supposed to chop peppers? Can you make them all the same size? No, I cannot, Chef. It's such a long and little bench. I don't know why, I just think like, I need that information. <laughs> Definitely will make again this summer, but I will have to enlist a sous chef <laughs> to help me with all that chopping. Did you all know that I have a new show on PBS wow. Food? It's about two people swapping recipes from their culture to learn a little bit more about one another. I've never seen this before. And then you got that corn, it's like, whoa. I'm a part of it. We had a whole lot of fun using a lot of you <laughs> subscribers. I hope that you check it out. The link is in the description. Okay, cut! <laughs>Hi Beryl, I'm Charlie and I live in London, but I'm half Sri Lankan and a large part of my family live in Colombo in Sri Lanka. Today I'd like to share my Auntie Yvonne's recipe for a mango salad. Auntie Yvonne was my great aunt, a matriarch, a professional model in her heyday and a former Miss Ceylon in 1962. And Ceylon is the old name for Sri Lanka. She was my mum's godmother as well as aunt and she sowed unwavering support and strength for my mum in some extremely difficult circumstances. She was a legendary socialite on the Colombo scene and when we'd visit hotels in the city, she'd flow through them like she owned a place. Or the lobby managers, who'd fallen in love with her and her centrefolds decades ago, would fall over themselves to bring her extra cushions, complimentary drinks, drag over at new chairs. And of course, she always made sure her guests were looked after well. I never saw her without her hair freshly done, her lips perfectly painted red, and a graceful smile on her face. Auntie Yvonne died a few months ago, but I will never forget her sense of humour, or her many lessons about generosity, correct posture, cursing like a Sri Lankan sailor, and most importantly, hosting. She was a real force of nature, and I will always miss her vivacity. When I was 12 or 13, she taught me her recipe for a mango and onion salad that could tie together any meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, under the hot Sri Lankan sun. It is as elegant, refreshing, and timeless as she was. As Auntie Yvonne would say, take your time with the placing, Think about how your guests will want to see it and eat it. And darling, make it pretty. Enjoy. Charlie's story about his Auntie Yvonne was absolutely fabulous. She was spectacularly beautiful, my goodness. I also just loved the whole description of her being. And when Charlie said to make it beautiful, I took it to heart. I hope that I have done her and you proud. I think it looks really pretty. Mm-hmm. I love red onion and I love lime juice. Ooh, the kick of the green chili was so nice with the really sweet and sourness flavor that I was happening. Whoa, my mouth is like watering because there's so many different flavors. Yum. Charlie said that the dish goes with anything and I totally can see that. This is something that would be great for breakfast if you want a little bit of spice in the morning but served with a protein of any sort, like fish or chicken would be great. If you're going vegetarian, like with roasted cauliflower or tofu, this would be so good. Summer barbecue, big bowl of this in the hot sun, heck yeah. And what's great about it is that all of the ingredients are super, super accessible. So you could replicate this in any country, anywhere in the world. Whoa, okay. I was like trying to talk through that I ate like a really, really big piece of green chili. <sighs> Thought it was getting stronger and then like certain things happen. I'm like, I can eat spice and then boom, the green chili takes you down. On the surface, I think that you could look at a salad like this and be like, yeah, like, you know, it's just like a mango and onion salad. But coupled with the story of Charlie's aunt, it just like, it's so much more than that. And this dish is to me, like it's more than just a mango and onion salad now. It's Charlie's aunt salad. And if you all make it, I, you know, it's just cool to think that you guys could make it as well. And then that dish gets carried around the world with that memory attached to it. Yeah. Hey Beryl, hey everyone. My name is Balagtas. I was born, raised, and currently live in the city of Manila, the capital of the Philippines. Today, I'd like to talk about a very simple coffee recipe, which I like to call citrus coffee. It doesn't really have a Filipino translation because it's not a uniquely Filipino recipe. Essentially, it's three ingredients. A cup of cold coffee, a few teaspoons of your favorite citrus concentrate. I like to use calamansi since calamansi is our local citrus fruit. Simple syrup is actually really easy to make. I see it being sold all the time. To make it, it is literally one part sugar to one part water. So I'm doing one cup of sugar to one cup of water, and that's it. Just dissolve it in hot water. 
but you can use any citrus concentrate that's available to you, like lemon. And finally, some sugar or a sugar substitute. This can keep in your fridge for a good long while, so it's nice. You can make it and just have it for a rainy day. A coffee, a juice, a cocktail, whatever your fancy is. What I like about citrus coffee. coffee is how refreshing it feels. Usually, I'm a fan of iced coffee and having citrus fruit in my coffee it gives me a very fresh feeling especially here in the philippines where the heat is sweltering like all year round citrus coffee the philippines is actually one of the few countries that grows all four varieties of commercially available coffee so a lot of us do drink coffee on a daily basis it is only recently that cold coffee emerged here in the philippines with the rise of cafe culture and the rise of various international cafe franchises people start to hang out in cafes we like spend a lot of hours just socializing and just bonding over friendship and just simply the good coffee. I have never had coffee with citrus in it, but I know that I love the taste of calamansi. I've used it on the channel before, but I like the blog test said that you can use any type of citrus. So orange juice, lemon juice, lime juice. What's more citrus? Pomelo juice? Anyway. I don't think I've ever had an effervescent coffee, but I will say I am 100% team seltzer over flat water any day of the week, any moment of the day, nonstop forever and ever. I love seltzer. It would give me a bit of a taste of what Filipino coffee and Filipino citrus is like here. Ta guy! Balugtas? Cheers! I'm curious. That is so good. The effervescence is so delightful and the calamansi adds so much brightness. I really did not have any expectation. I think I was just like along for the ride, but the destination is incredible. I can say without a doubt that this will absolutely be a part of my summer coffee repertoire. I don't know if I could order this at a coffee shop, but I could definitely make this at home again. It's delightful. Any type of coffee would work. I just love an iced Americano, so that's why I went with an iced Americano. Wow, 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 wow. You guys should all really try this. Whatever type of juice you want, but I would definitely try this at home. Hi everyone, my name is Fatiha. I live in Selangor, Malaysia, and the dessert that I want to share with you today is called Ice Kapal Milo or Milo Shift Ice. If you ask any local Malaysians what is the most popular shift ice in Malaysia, they will definitely answer Ai Batu Champu or ABC in short. But Milo Shift Ice is also a popular dessert in Malaysia since 2017 so that's why i want to share this with you as well it is essentially shaved ice topped with a chocolate sauce made with milo and it is so easy to make i do warn you though that this dessert is very sweet depending on the amount of condensed milk that you put in the sauce i don't usually eat them since i don't really like sweet foods but my father would usually buy them for my family after leaving the Friday prayers. And when I think back about it now, it just shows that he is still thinking about his family even when he's out doing his own thing. Milo is the most popular chocolate drink in Malaysia and for the fellow Milo lovers out there, why not try this version of Milo? Not me casually trying to match my shaved ice. I think that the idea of chocolate shaved ice is actually kind of a novel concept to me. I usually think of it as like a fruity thing. I do feel nervous I didn't put enough chocolate on though. Oh, yes I did. Mmm. It's like a frozen hot chocolate. Okay, this is so good. It's hard to talk with like chunks of ice in your mouth. Um, this tastes like I'm having frozen hot chocolate and that is incredible. I love it. The chocolate is chocolatey, but it's condensed milky. So it's like a very smooth, sweet chocolate. Part of what I do when I like do these videos is I talk about like all the steps and all the things I did. Like I put chocolate on ice. All I can say is that this 
the slaps and uh, it was obviously really easy to do. The one thing that I'm kind of curious about, like, you know, I like to slurp the liquid at the bottom. Is this just like chocolate water at the bottom? Like it is, but it's not, it like tastes just like chocolate beverage, but it's really good. <laughs> Chocolate beverage, like the knockoff of a knockoff. What is that? Mm. I like that too. I like all of this. Okay, I don't know what else to say. 10 out of 10, tell your family and friends that making chocolate shaved ice is the new thing. You heard it here first. Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next week.